Hi everyone, my name is Gregor Weiss. I'm a professor of finance here at Leipzig University and I welcome you all to this class in artificial intelligence and machine learning in finance. And in this first lecture, in this first video, I would like to show you uh, the course outline, how this class is organized uh, and what we will be talking about over the course of the next 12 or 14 um, weeks. Um, this is the outline for the whole lecture, which is actually pretty short. Um, but as you can see, especially in chapter three, uh, we will have a lot to talk about. So we'll start today with the course organization, what textbooks you can use, how much credits you get if you're studying this at Leipzig University. Um, and then we'll start with a short introduction to the topic of machine learning and artificial intelligence, what it is, uh, what it comprises and how it can be used in finance and financial applications. And in the second chapter, we'll then um, discuss data sources. Where does data come from, um, especially big data? How does it need to be processed? Uh, and how can we generate new data? Um, and how does uh, the data we will be using, how does it need to be pre-processed um, before we can run all our algorithms coming from AI, AI and machine learning. And then, as I said, in the third chapter, uh, which will be um, the largest part in this lecture, uh, we will discuss various methods from artificial intelligence and machine learning and how they are applied uh, to questions and problems in finance and financial economics. So this is the outline and We'll start directly with the course organization, some basic information. So if you're not studying this at Leipzig, you can probably skip a lot of this information, um, but you might be interested in, for example, the textbooks. So um, this is a two hours uh, per week class. It's online and on demand via YouTube. Uh, here at Leipzig, it's an elective class in our Master of Science in Business Administrations degree. And you will get five ECTS points if you pass the final exam. And the assessment will be done via an electronic exam on our ELIAS uh, system. And um, it is based on single choice questions. Actually, it can also be multiple choice uh, in some um, cases, but most of them will be single choice and it will run for 60 minutes. Now, we do have a lot of exchange students, but I'm afraid I have to say that uh, the exchange students can take the regular exam, but there will be no Erasmus paper in this class. So if you're an exchange student coming to us from uh, one of our partner institutions, uh, I would very much like to ask you to take the regular exam, which is, I hope, most convenient for everyone because it is electronic and done on the ILIA system. Um, and for the exam, please check the information given out by our exam office in Germany, the Prüfungsmanagement, uh, and they um, have a lot of information on the internet and on the first floor of the Institutsgebäude um, in our main building. So uh, please stay up to date uh, with the uh, with regard to the information on the written exam, for example, for the date of the exam, the exact time, etc. Um, for e-learning. Um, you're probably watching this on YouTube. Um, if um, you um, want to get access to some of the data uh, samples, to some of the coding, I'll upload this also um, in the description of the YouTube videos. But uh, our students here at Leipzig, you can um, perhaps this is more convenient for you. You can also go to our Moodle uh, companion site and download the data and these slides from there. Now. Um, I'm also on Twitter, so if you're interested more in um, topics that are more related to research rather than teaching, uh, you can also follow me uh, on Twitter. Simply um, go to Twitter and uh, GNF Wise, that's me. So I'm happy to um, tweet some uh, research results uh, and uh, engage in discussions um, with respect to research in financial economics and sometimes a little bit also on uh, teaching. Now all these lectures, um, they will be uploaded throughout the semester on YouTube. Um, and what you can do is you can simply click on this button and you can subscribe to uh, my channel uh, and you will be notified every time I upload a new video 
um, so uh, you're always up to date. We're talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning in this class and naturally this will be uh, done on the basis on the foundation of statistics and statistical analysis so it's not surprising that most of the textbooks that i rec recommend uh, are actually on statistical learning um, ai and ml are basically buzzwords that nowadays uh, describe things and algorithms and methods that have been around for decades, sometimes even centuries, uh, and have been part of statistical learning, multivariate analysis. But nowadays, uh, these methods have uh, received more and more attention because nowadays computers are able um, to work on much more data, much quicker. So we are actually um, using methods from statistical learning. And one of the best textbooks on statistical learning is James Witten Hasty Tipshirani with applications in R, as you can see from the cover of the textbook. This is very, very convenient, and I will take many examples from this textbook as it's such um, a great read uh, if you're interested in um, the um, basics in statistical learning and machine learning. The second one, also not surprisingly, by Hasty Tipshirani and uh, this time Friedman, it's a little bit older, uh, Elements of Statistical Learning, has uh, a stronger focus on data mining, uh, doesn't include that much uh, R programming code, so this first one is maybe a little bit more applied, uh, the second one is a little bit more theoretical. Uh, Hasty and Tipshirani are uh, um, famous authors from the statistical learning um, literature, so these two textbooks are actually very, very good. The third one is or has only been out for a couple of years, uh, which is by John Hull from the University of Toronto, Machine Learning in Business. Uh, now, John Hull is famous for his two books and his research on options and derivatives. And this one is um, also very uh, very, very good, uh, has um, only been published in the second edition now, um, and it takes examples from all over business and business administration, not, not just finance, and it's a very good applied introduction to machine learning in various fields um, of business. The fourth one is Advances in Financial Machine Learning by Lopez de Prado. Um, this one is very, very applied, um, and it has a strong focus on, um, I would say, trading and algorithmic trading. Um, it is a good companion textbook, uh, in addition to the Hasty and Tipshirani textbooks. Again, as the cover and the title suggests, it is focused on finance and financial economics primarily, um, but it focuses on a subset of problems in finance that I would consider is important, but it doesn't really cover the whole range of topics that we will be talking about in this class. So it's, it's a good additional read, I would say. And last but not least, uh, Deep Learning by Goodfellow, Bengio and Corville. Uh, this is the German one. Uh, the original is, of course, in English. Um, this is a uh, huge uh, um, and was a huge success, I think, and is an extremely, uh, extremely good uh, textbook on deep learning as one part of artificial intelligence. Um, it is not really focused about uh, focused on finance or business in the first place, but this is, I would say, the standard textbook on deep learning. And as soon as we dive into deep learning um, in chapter three, uh, we need to uh, rely and use this textbook as a reference. So that's why I mentioned this here. So what is the objective? What are the objectives of this class? First of all, I want to introduce you all to um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, the basic principles, the basic methods that are used in AI and in ML, and show you how they can be used in finance and financial economics. So that's why we first need to discuss the various methods and algorithms from AI and ML. I will show you the different applications of AI and ML together with respective data sets and programming code 
it, this is an applied class. Um, I don't want to show you any proofs. This is not a purely math class. But um, as um, soon as we've understood the basic algorithms, the models, we will take the models to data, to real data samples, and um, exemplify how this um, field of AI and ML can be used in financial economics, for example, in pricing assets, in forecasting uh, price changes, in uh, modeling um, um, risk factors um, in um, modeling huge and big data samples and so on. And then, last but not least, uh, I think it's important not only to focus on the statistical side of AI and ML, but I also want to focus on uh, some related topics like, for example, regulation. How should AI ML be regulated? Uh, think about, for example, credit risk forecasting and the forecasting of defaults in a loan portfolio. If we were, and there are some very interesting research papers out uh, by, I think, colleagues from Yale University, uh, if we, for example, were to use AI and ML um, and use a purely data-driven approach, it might be that our model, for some reason, somehow discriminates against minorities um, in a credit portfolio. Should this be regulated? What are the ethical implications of such an algorithm? Uh, next, systemic risk. AI and ML can be used by banks. It can also be used by regulators and supervisors. And then it might be interesting to see how the uh, ubiquitous use of AI and ML can lead to systemic risk and on the other hand, on the other side, how supervisors could, for example, use AI ML to prevent a systemic uh, crisis. So this is not so much about the methods and the algorithms, but this is about the use itself and what um, the use of AI and ML, what types of problems this use might um, um, entail. So this is uh, the course objective. Um, this is the plan for the next couple of weeks and months. And um, in the next video, we'll start with the introduction.